What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. So NBA free agency started yesterday and while it was a pretty damn slow day, we did get some big news this morning. Paul George has officially left the Los Angeles Clippers and is signing a four year deal with the Philadelphia 76ers. Without further ado, our first free agency rebuild or post free agency rebuild will be a Paul George Philadelphia 76ers rebuild. Let's get it. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you're new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. It is somewhat early in the morning, so if I sound groggy, I do apologize. But I usually have, you know, have lately have done a couple done videos at night, but there was really like nothing that I wanted to do a video on yet until this Paul George thing happened because it sounded like it was going to happen very quickly. And lo and behold, we get the news this morning that Paul George is a Philadelphia 76er. So the first thing we're going to do for Paul George in this one is we are going to make sure this man doesn't regress like crazy because in 2K, the man regress is like ridiculously crazy. So we're going to move his peak end age to like 39. That way he actually stays decent throughout the video. If not, he was going to regress like to an 81 overall by the third season or something like that. But yeah, so obviously Philadelphia 76 to have Embiid. Maxi has yet to be your side, but of course that's eventually going to happen. No, uh, no brainer there. Uh, they've got Kelly Oubre back as well. They've signed Andre Drummond and they've also signed, uh, I swear there was one other, oh, and Eric Gordon. That was the other thing they did. So still a little bit of a roster fill out. So of course the 76ers, you can still do a lot of things. So I guess I'm going to be going out here and predicting what they could do. Uh, so let's just get straight to free agency and keep going here. So, um, it'll be interesting to see what else we could do. So of course, I don't think the Sixers are going to be in the camp of re-signing Nick, uh, or Tobias Harris. I just don't think that's something that's going to happen. I think the last taste that uh, 76ers fans got of Tobias Harris would make you think they're probably not going to bring him back. I do believe that Buddy Heald could be a nice addition to come back. So we're going to go ahead and start there. So we're going to re-sign Buddy Heald to a deal. So we're going to him like a three-year deal to bring him back for some nice depth. Maxi also is getting an offer sheet. So we can go ahead and match that, of course, right away. Um, so we can get Maxi back, which is nice. We'll go ahead and do that. So then we could also... I don't want to renounce the Anthony Mellon. I think I'd try to keep him if possible. And then Batum, it sounds like there was already some reports that he's not going to come back. So we're going to leave him out. So we got Maxi and also got, um, you know, got Maxi, got Buddy Heel back. So that is nice. And of course, we got Jared McCain and Ed Dembona out of the draft as well. Not sure they'll be able to play right away. We might be able to throw Jared McCain some minutes right away, low key. But uh, I think we can move Maxi to point guard, considering where we're at as a roster. So we can move Maxi to point guard. So he'll play point guard starting there. And then Paul George will obviously be our starting small forward. And then Buddy Hill will be our starting two guard. Uh, Kyle Oubre can be the bench. Or you could eventually move Oubre to the third or two as well. Uh, but I do believe with the Drummond signing, it makes me wonder if Paul Reed is going to be moved. Because, I don't know, it's just kind of weird. I know you need three centers, but Drummond doesn't feel like a third string center to me, if that makes any sense. So, maybe Paul Reed is going to be eventually moved. But let's go ahead and see what else we can do in free agency. So... Now we're at the point where all our money has been used. So we don't have a lot of money to do anything else, unfortunately. So maybe we're going to go try to, uh, we still have those Clippers picks, which obviously those are going to be more valuable now. Uh, so shout out to the Sixers for doing all that they've done so far. And they still have those Clippers picks. So uh, pretty amazing stuff there for them. But I think what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go see if we can make a trade using Paul Reed's contract. I think that's the best way to go about things now, since we have Drummond as a backup five. I think Paul Reed becomes expendable, and we're going to see if we can get anything in return for Paul Reed. Today's video is brought to you by DGF's Optimizer. You play on absolute price picks, underdog, or any other DFS app. Having a tool like this is so clutch to finding good plays right in front of you without having to do any research whatsoever. For example, on the board at the moment, we got Yerio Rodriguez under three and a half strikeouts. The reason why we know this is a good play is because every single book is giving the juice heavily favored on the under. So that is why this is a play we can lock and load onto price picks. His price picks, we get this at minus 119 odds on a uh, five flex. So uh, we know that's a profitable play over the long term, which is why I absolutely love this tool because I found that play within two seconds just like that. And of course, like I said, use it on apps, which is price picks. So we go ahead and go try to find Yurio Rodriguez over on price picks. We could go and see if that has been bumped yet, but there's a possibility this is already gone because price picks bumps things, but no, it's still there. So you can go ahead and take the under on his strikeouts. And then we, we don't really have enough value to build like a five flex right now but absolutely love price picks and uh dgf make sure you guys use code crushables 25 percent off your first month on the optimizer and in price picks matches your first deposit dollar for dollar up to a hundred dollars other than that 
Let's get back to the video. So funny enough, Tyrese Maxey just agreed to a four or a five year, $204 million contract. Now, unfortunately, 2K doesn't let me max his salary out to a contract like that. The most I can give him and uh, is, yeah, the most I can give him is 34 million. So really can't fix that. Unfortunately, there's really no way, which is kind of dumb. I wish 2K would fix that, but uh, unfortunately, nothing we can do. Aaron Wiggins also signed a five-year deal with the Oklahoma City Thunder, which is nice for him. So yeah, some signings are happening in free agency, uh, but I do have an idea with Paul Reed. So uh, since the Nuggets lost uh, KCP, they are under the first apron now, according to Keith Smith. So we are going to try to see if we can get Peyton Watson off of them because you know, the Nuggets problem with their center or their bench has been their center position. They haven't really had a good backup five they can rely on outside of Jokic. I know they just drafted Dron Holmes, but I don't know if Dron Holmes would be ready to play like that. So we're going to see if we can do like a Paul Reed for Peyton Watson swap. And let's see what they would do with this. So they say no. So maybe they wouldn't never. They Maybe they're not interested in this. And actually, they agree. All it took was two second round picks. So we get Peyton Watson on Philadelphia, which I really like. I think he'll develop nicely into a decent power forward for us. And I'm not saying that's going to happen in real life by any means. But I think Paul Reed being traded is kind of like the idea we were going with. So is there anything else we want to do here? The only other thing I want to do is with Buddy Heald, kind of similar to Paul George. The man just regresses like crazy for no reason. So I'm going to do the same thing with him that I did with Paul George. So we're going to make sure he doesn't start regressing like crazy. That way he's going to be a key part of the rotation for a while. And I think that will probably be all we can truly do. Uh, we do have money to sign like a smaller MLE or biennial exception, whatever it's called. Is there anything else we want to use it on is the question. We could get like slow-mo. Is there anybody, because we not might not play a Dem Bona right away, so we technically don't have 10-minute rotation. So I actually don't hate the idea of like slow-mo potentially. So I'm going to go ahead and get slow-mo. I'm going to sign Kyle Anderson to a contract, and that will be our offseason, I think. So not too shabby. Let's go to player progression, and let's see what this is going to look like. So Joel Embiid is regressed. Paul George, even though I mess with his, uh, you know, regression, he still regresses. But, uh, but he heals down too. Same thing. He regressed still as well. Um, and then you got uh, Kyle Anderson saying the same. So all that's looking good. Let's get straight into next season. And let's see what a big three of Paul George, Tyrese Maxey, and Joel Embiid is going to truly do according to 2K. I'm excited to see what 2K would think of this team. So, um, of course, like I said, the Philadelphia 76ers are absolutely incomplete in real life. Recording this very early in the morning. So if they trade Paul Reed for something else, and obviously that doesn't reflect in this video, it's because I'm recording this very early in the morning. Uh, so four star grit and grind and I have my phone on me to just keep looking at more transactions But do we leave it at grit and grind? I guess we do. So we're gonna leave this at a grit and grind Uh, obviously disgusting that they want to start drumming at the power forward. We're obviously not gonna do that Uh, so Drummond is definitely not gonna be playing power forward So Sasha Vinskov somehow ended up on our team, which I actually don't hate that much But kind of weird still uh, they ended up here. So we're gonna move uh, Adem Bonin into the G League that way Hopefully he'll develop and be ready to play next year Sasha, uh, we already have Ubre as our backup three. Paul George is starting small four. Buddy Hill starting two guard. So pretty much the only thing we need to do here is we need to swap uh, Andre Drummond for Peyton Watson. Actually, going to have Peyton Watson start. We're going to start Peyton Watson. It's going to be something like this. So we'll do this for this season, and that will be how we run things. I'm also going to give Jared McCain these minutes over Sasha. So Jared McCain is going to play right away for us. So Jeremy McCain, Kyle Anderson, Drummond, and Oubre is our bench with Embiid, Watson, Paul George, Buddy Heald, and Maxi. I do believe that Oubre and Buddy Heald are like interchangeable. If you want to start Oubre the two guard, that's fine. But uh, I guess I'll go ahead and just leave Oubre as the sixth man. But let's go ahead. Simulate year number one. I guess we might as well just run this to a balanced system. I'm going to have to fix this all over again, but I'll do that in just a second. But apparently what we're doing, you know, moves us down to a three and a half. So let's move this to a balance and I'll see you guys at the end of year number one with Paul George officially in Philadelphia. So at the end of year number one, Luka Doncic wins MVP. Alex Sar is your rookie of the year. Russell Westbrook still in LA at the moment. Of course, will eventually be moved when six man Wimby defensive player. K Cunningham most improved who got a bag. Uh, Trey Young clutch player and Tom Thibodeau's coach of the year. And Nick Valentine is your executive. So all NBA first team, Luka, Giannis, Jokic, Wimby, LaMelo. Here's your all NBA second team. We got Joel Embiid making it, which is nice. Uh, do we get like Maxi or Paul George as well? Unfortunately, we do not. Here's all offense first team and all defensive second team. All rookie first team. Do we get uh, Jeremy Kane? Yes, we do. Jeremy Kane makes all rookie second team. W to see that. Eight points and 42% shooting from three. So definitely an impactful rookie right away. And I could definitely see that in real life for sure as well. Don't connect here. Craig Porter. 
Ron Holland and Reed Shepard also here. So we ended up being the first seed in the Eastern Conference, uh, which is nice. So obviously, to me right now, the totem pole in the East, I still think obviously Boston is the team to beat. No brainer there. They won the championship. I have the Knicks right under them. And I think I have like the Philadelphia 76ers and Bucks on the same tier with the Pacers after that until proven otherwise by the Bucks because uh, the Bucks were very disappointing last year. But if we take a look at the player stats, here's how things ended up. You have 24 from Maxi, 24 from MB, 22 from pa Paul George, 13 from Oubre, 12 from Buddy Heald, and 8.5 from McCain, 8 from Drummond, and 7 from Payne Watson, and 5 from Kyle Anderson. So not too shabby, but now let's get into these playoffs and see if we can go far. So Orlando, of course, signed Contavious Caldwell Pope, and he's not even starting for them. He's like at the end of their bench, which... Of course, makes no sense in real life. He would probably start based off the amount of money they gave him. But Alec Burks is starting over him, which is kind of dumb. But, uh, you know, I'm not the Magic GM in this scenario. So let's go ahead. Somebody like Curran against Orlando. Orlando is a young rising team as well. So uh, would not be surprised if they give us some problems here. But hopefully we just beat them. And we are going to go up three to one. So if we are one game away, we do beat them in five W. Okay. So I'm kind of hoping we get Boston, but I know we're probably not going to. I'm surprised Boston's even in the playoffs here. And I know if you never really play 2K, you're like, what are you talking about? Why is Bo you know, Boston sucks in the 2K simulation. I don't know why, but they just really suck. But uh, they're here, so they do lose in round, two, around one of the Pistons, though. All right, so Knicks also might be losing. And you got Indiana Milwaukee rematch again. So let's see who wins. And it's going to be the Pacers once again beating the Pacers. Or Pacers once again beating the Bucks. And then you got the Pacers uh, and the Hawks in round two as the Hawks beat the Knicks in six. So... Mikel Bridges trade, I guess, did not end up working out. But we get Detroit in round two. They signed Tobias Harris, which is uh, what a lot of people expect. Um, and they got, like, Isaac Core off their bench as well. So they got Isaiah Hardstein as well. So a pretty solid offseason for them. So hopefully we can still beat them, though. So Mike Kerr running against Detroit. And we are up 2-1. to one. We're up 3-1. to one, And we are going to these cards finals. So, so far, so good. Beat both teams that we faced in five games. And now we get the Hawks in the conference finals. Got Denver and Dallas on the other side. So a Jokic versus Doncic series would be absolute cinema. Of course, uh, you know, Dallas might be adding Clay Thompson here soon as I'm recording this. That's not official just yet. Also, by the way, uh, Isaiah Joe just also agreed to an extension with the Thunder as well. So the Thunder are locking their guys up. You got Atlanta, though, like I said. Obviously, Risha Shea is there. So hopefully we could beat them and make it to the finals in year one. Like current round against Atlanta, and we got an even series. So, of course, the last time the 76ers and Hawks faced up in the playoffs, that was back when Ben Simmons was on this team. We don't have that problem anymore, so hopefully we don't lose to the Hawks um, and we get to the finals here. So, this is probably our best chance to do so as well because the East is only going to get better. But, uh, unfortunately, we're going to lose game five, so that could spell bad juju. So, let's go ahead and see if we can come out here. And also, let's drink bench utilization. I didn't realize bench utilization was that much. We're going to go to eight minute rotation. And let's see if we can win game six to force a game seven back to Philadelphia. Hopefully, we can do that. Atlanta, of course, is not that good in real life. But here they are in 2K giving us some problems. And we are going to... Oh, my goodness. This was close. They forced OT, but we beat them to force the game seven nonetheless. So, go to a game seven. Denver and Dallas is still going as well on the other side. Game seven. And Philly to go to the NBA Finals. We start off very hot in the first quarter. First quarter. Hopefully, we can keep that foot, uh, foot on the gas. And the momentum still goes our way. And we are going to go to the NBA Finals in year number one. W, 45 and 14 from B, 34 from Maxi. And now we either get Dallas or Denver. I'm kind of hoping we get Denver. I think a Jokic versus a Bead series would be a lot of fun. And it is the Dallas Mavericks instead. So, Dallas is back in the NBA Finals looking to win it around this time. Of course, they lost to Boston last year. They have recently acquired... Quentin Grimes and also signed Najee Marshall as well. He is at the end of their bench, maybe, or did they cut him? Or did it not? Is he just not there anymore? So Najee Marshall is just not there anymore. I don't know why. So I guess that is something that either they got rid of him or I don't know. Well, that's kind of weird. So hopefully that ends up not happening again, but it is what it is. So game one, one to zero goes to them. They beat us by one point. So that's that's tough. Game two, they're up two to zero. Not a good start for us. So let's see if we can come back and win a couple to tie this series. They won both games in Philly. We got to win both in Dallas. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So we're going to go down 3-0. to zero, And that obviously means this series is probably over. So we get swept by the Mavericks in the NBA Finals, which is really disappointing. Sucks really badly. But 
at least we made it there at least Joel Embiid got out of the second round but unfortunately did not end in you know a championship but we still got time to keep going so let's go to the lottery and uh I am curious though to see where uh Najee Marshall went uh so as far as draft pick compensation we don't got nothing going on this offseason but we still have those future picks so we still have the ability to potentially make a trade if we wanted to but where did Marshall go just really quick I got to check this out so Marshall where did he go so he is on the map or he was on the Mavericks did I just not see his name maybe I'm just dumb and passed him like several times I don't know uh it's early in the morning forgive me if I did all right so I'm gonna go ahead get around the league and see if there's an ability to make a trade because we saw these Clippers picks that could be extremely valuable so like we could make a potential big trade potentially so we'll have to look into it though so no draft pick on draft night. So before we even make a trade, I'm going to see what free agency can do for us first. So Drummond and Uber are going to decline their player options. A dim bonus should, in theory, be able to play next year in the rotation, which should be a big boost for us. Uh, but qualifying offers, Travion, Traquavion, Traquavion Smith is a qualifying offer, and so is Sasha. But I don't really want either of them back. So free agency, bird rights. We do have Drummond bird rights, which would be nice. And we don't, and we could resign Uber as well. So I think we got to resign both of them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just start with getting Ubre back and I'm going to resign Drummond as well. So we need to sign both of them here to start things off here to free agency. So still probably not going to be able to do a whole lot. So we do have a $5 million trade exception with Paul Reed, which could be useful. Uh, and we still have the money to sign like an Alice Caruso, which of course would be amazing uh, if he signed on a small biannual exception. Uh, but uh, what do we want to do here? So I think if nothing else, I think what I want to do, I know what I want to do. I want to get a good power forward in the building because what I think we could do is we could play Paul George at the two. We could start Payne Watson at the three or start Ubre or whatever, and we can get like a legitimate power forward in the building. That's kind of what I want because Payne Watson six, seven. I don't mind him at power forward, but I would love to see if I could slide him to small forward. He would go up and things would just be more beautiful that way. So that's what I want to try to do. And we'll see if we can make it happen. I don't know if we'll be able to. Maybe we can get like a power forward who's still on a small contract. That's where we're going to try to look to see if we can make that upgrade here through a trade. The trade for a power forward doesn't really seem possible at the moment. There's really nobody that's not making that much money that we could get. I mean, we could combine a couple of salaries. Like, I mean, we have Ubre salary, but I think we'll wait. We have uh, Kyle Anderson and Buddy Heald salary, but that would, you know, kind of shoot our depth just a little bit. So I guess we could try this really quickly. So if we threw Kyle Anderson and Buddy Heald in like one of these first round picks, but if we can't get a power forward through here, so we could get Bobby Portis, which wouldn't be too bad. Uh, we swap first round picks with them, uh, which is a swap with uh, the Blazers in 2028. So Bobby Portis would actually be kind of interesting. Maybe we could go that route. I don't hate that idea. So do we want Bobby Portis or do we want to keep what we have and just sign a Jonathan Isaac in free agency? I think signing Jonathan Isaac, if we could get him, is probably the route to go. So I'm going to see if I get Jonathan Isaac. Uh, it'd be cool if I get him on a two-year deal. He declines a two-year. So let's say we just give him a one-year then. And he'll accept that. So I think we're going to get Isaac on the last day, which I think is nice. So Isaac could be our starting power forward, which I don't mind. So uh, Jeremy Kane also up to 78. And so is the Dim Bono, which is great. Drummond is down one. Watson is up. And Isaac is up. So I've already moved Paul George and also uh, Peyton Watson, a small forward and shooting guard, respectfully. So now Isaac is our brand new power forward. So we're going to see if that results in anything new in next year's simulation. Hopefully we're a first seed in the East again, dominate the East. Uh, and we can get back to the finals. Maybe this time it results in a championship for us. But uh, yeah, not a whole lot done this offseason. Isaac was our big addition, of course. But we still have these draft picks that we're sitting on. So eventually we still could maybe make a big trade. It just all depends on how this simulation is going to go for us. So once again, four-star balance. Um, so they want to start Ubre, which I'm fine with. If they want to start Ubre over Watson, I don't hate that. So it'll be Ubre starting Isaac, Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, Paul George. I like that quite a bit. And then McCain will get those last minutes here. So, which means that Devin Bona is out of the rotation. I guess we could send him to the G League once again. So, uh, I do wonder, though, if we move in a small four, he might even go up uh, even more. Let me check. No, he does not. So, that is not the route we want to go with him. So, we're going to send him to the G League again, which might make Ubre more expendable in the future. Watson, we could re-sign. Uh, obviously, Ubre now is the big contract. So, maybe we could use him to make a trade. So we're just going to all check things out, but maybe the Clippers are really bad this year and we need to take advantage of that draft pick being available. So yeah, we definitely need to check at the trade deadline how valuable that pick is, but we'll go ahead and cross that bridge when we get there.
So we are at the trade deadline as promised. And I have an ideal target in mind to add to this team. He hasn't really worked out with this specific situation. So who we're looking at is Houston Rockets Jabari Smith Jr. He's making just around what Kelly Oubre makes. Obviously, he's going to have to be paid this offseason. Maybe the Rockets, you know, have so many young players are already, you know, focused on. Although Jabari was a top, you know, top three for uh, third overall pick. He just hasn't done great in Houston, and he's not having a good year there either. So we're going to try to see if we can get Jabari Smith Jr. in Houston, uh, or sorry, in Philadelphia and take him from Houston. So how we're going to do this is we're going to offer Ubre salary, and we have these picks that are pretty valuable here. So we're going to offer this 2026 first in order to get Jabari Smith Jr. So let's see if we just do it for that. So they don't agree to that. I will give you also... Let's see if we can get, like, get away with just a bunch of seconds first and foremost. So they do agree. So just like that, we get Jabari Smith Jr. at the trade deadline, which feels amazing. So now Jabari Smith Jr. is our brand new power forward, which is awesome. So now Peyton Watson will start. It's Jabari Smith, you know, starts there. And that moves Jonathan Isaac down to the bench. So Jabari Smith Jr. should be an amazing addition with his Philadelphia team. Would be a perfect fit next to Embiid. Ideally, his shooting would get a lot better. Um, which is what you'd hope if he gets to a new situation. Maybe he starts to go off in Philadelphia, but I'm feeling very good about that addition. We get to resign him in the offseason, and now we submit like the rest of the season and hoping Jabari Smith Jr. helps our team get back to being in the contention for that first seed in the East. So at the end of year number two, Luka wins MVP. Cooper Flag on the Warriors is your rookie of the year. Nikola Topic, six man, Victor Webb, and y'all defensive player. Devin Carter, most improved, and Lamelo's clutch player, and Tom Thibodeau is your coach leader, and Nick Valentine is your executive. So, um, which is interesting because we ended up being the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference, as you guys can see. But still, uh, I guess we'll take that. Here's your NBA first team, NBA second, NBA third. So no Embiid at all, um, which is kind of crazy. But okay, offensive first team and all defensive second team. So, um, you know, still no 76ers representatives there. And uh, yeah, so no 76ers at all. But we end up as the fifth seed in the East, despite... You know, the Jabari Smith Jr. edition. We did win 54 games, so uh, 54 games though. So hopefully that means we're still going to be very, very tough in this conference. But I think with the Jabari, Jabari Smith Jr. edition, um, things are going to go our way pretty nicely. Hopefully, anyway. So we draw Indiana in round one. Who have uh, Halliburton, Nimhard, Matherin, Siaka, Miles Turner, Obi Toppin, Jarris Walker, and Isaiah Jackson. So hopefully. We can come out here. So they actually want to start uh, Kyle Anderson for these playoffs, which is interesting. I don't hate it. Uh, does Indiana still have OB top and yes, they do. Okay. So, um, all right, let's go ahead. Semi current round against Indiana and we are down one to zero, but we win the next three and we are going now uh, we got to beat them in six and we do. Okay. So now we get the Knicks. The Celtics are nowhere to be found. So the Knicks are obviously the team to beat and these two teams just matched up in real life. So, uh, hopefully we can get some revenge after they beat us. Now, this is a very tough Knicks team. So I'm, uh, definitely concerned. We got our work cut out for us here. Uh, do they want to start Peyton Watson yet? And no, Kyle Anderson is still going to start for us. Okay. Here goes nothing. Game one, one to zero goes to us. 138 to 112. Jeremy Brunson with 29, 39 for Maxi. Love to see that. So we still want in New York. We still both in New York. Okay. Great start. 36 from Paul George. Game three, they win. So they get a game in Philly, but we're up three to one. Do we beat them in five? Yes, we do. We're back in the conference finals, ladies and gentlemen. And now we're going to draw the Brooklyn Nets of all teams. So what has Brooklyn done? They got Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell seems to always sign with Brooklyn now in the simulation. So uh, obviously once he resigns that Cleveland extent or resigns Cleveland as expected, um, he will obviously be in Cleveland more than he goes to Brooklyn. But uh, now still a solid team in Brooklyn, but I still think we're better. At least I hope so. They still apparently want to start. No, Watson's going to start again. The game one, one to zero goes to them. If we lose this Brooklyn team, I'm going to be pretty upset. Uh, but so far, we go up two to one, three to one. And I think we're going back to the finals. And now, of course, the Thunder are awaiting us. Probably they're going to beat the Mavericks. And we do get the Thunder. All right. So this one to win a championship back to back years of making the NBA finals. So the Thunder acquired Clay Thompson. All right. Well, I mean, this Thunder team, I'm not going to lie. It doesn't look as intimidating as they usually do. So maybe that works out for us. We'll see. They do have Dink down here. Uh, but Clay Thompson is their big addition. He's averaging seven points in the playoffs with 40% shooting from three. Jay, obviously, averaging 27. Chet, averaging 25. And J-Dub, averaging 18. So um, as far as how we're doing playoff statistically, going to these finals, you have 28 from Maxi, 24 from Paul George, and 21 from Embiid. But here goes nothing. So game one, 
One zero goes to us. Good start. Actually blew them out, which is great to see. Uh, game two, they even it up. He knew it wasn't going to be easy here, but we're up two to one. Beat them badly there. And we're up three to one. Can we beat them in five to win it all? No, we're going to a game six. Okay. So let's listen to 2K and let's make sure we secure this win in Philly. We do not want to go back to OKC for a game seven. So let's see if we can put our foot on the pedal and beat them in game six and not sweat a game seven. That'd be amazing to win this championship to end the video. Back and forth game we got, but I think as long as we don't blow a lead, I think we're going to bring a championship to Philly. Wait a minute. Oh no, hold on. Hold the phone. It's going to be tough, but I think as long as we don't blow this, I think we did it, guys. Uh, Maybe. Okay, so we're going to watch the rest of this. We're, we're up six with 59 seconds left. What could possibly go wrong? So, all right, so Isaac is at the free throw line. I'm not going to play this out, but we're going to watch the rest of this. So, Isaac, make sure you hit your free throws, please. All right, so um, I always do this backwards. So, camera, then boom. Uh, So, choose size, then camera. All right, so now... We have Drummond and Embiid on the floor at the same time, which I don't know why 2K is obsessed with doing stuff like that, but we do have Paul George coming back in, it looked like, with Kyle Anderson. All right, starting five, I think, is out there. So, John and Isaac hits the free throws. I guess Jabari's not out there, I don't think. So, starting five technically is not out there. Look how small Maxi looks to, compared to Shea. Gary Trent mid-range, and he misses, and that is going to be ultimately ending this video with a championship. So, of course, we only pretty much did two seasons, but guys... Philadelphia is probably not done in real life. And I think there's a possibility we could obviously revisit the 76ers in a rebuild. So I think I'm just going to end it on this note. I could go a few more seasons, obviously, but I think we can end it here. Feeling pretty confident that Philadelphia, of course, ooh, slow-mo three. Oh my, okay. That's how you know the video went our way today, which feels good. So we got a championship with Paul George in season number two. But like I said, man, we there's, a, there's definitely a chance we revisit this eventually. Because I think Philadelphia is not done making moves. Which, by the way, Jalen Smith just signed a three-year deal with the Chicago Bulls. So, I'm going to update those in my file and upload them in the scenario. Uh, but, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a ton of fun. I'm going to end it here on that note. I guess we can watch the championship celebration a little bit here. But, actually, I'll let you guys watch it. Thank you guys for watching. Paul George to Philadelphia ends in a championship in this video. I'll see you on the next one. This is Crushables. I'm saying... Peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.